This is Joy in the Journey with your hosts, Sue Landis and Beth Davis. Sharing real life stories, struggles, and victories, and how it's possible to keep your joy through it all. So stay tuned. It's time for Joy in the Journey. Welcome to the program today. My name is Beth Davis. This is Joy in the Journey. We're glad you tuned in to watch um, this evening. I think that's the time frame that the program is played. So if you're watching it tonight or maybe watching it whenever, because I know it's time changes all around the world and yeah. you just never know when you get to watch it. But welcome to the program today. We're glad you are um, tuned in to Joy in the Journey. And I uh, want to introduce, if you don't, haven't watched the program, um, Sue Landis does it with me and Peg O'Brien. Welcome again, ladies. And Thank you. Thank we're you. excited, right? Are you excited? Oh, yeah. You yes. walk in expectation, right? Yes. Oh, yeah. Amen. Expectation. Yeah. God's word is good. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. I just saw that. That's right. All right. Isn't that great? Isn't that great? <laughs> that Let the redeemed of the Lord <laughs> say so. And that's why we have And there's a problems. song, right? Isn't yeah, there a song? song? Yeah, there's a song. Let the say redeemed. So. Yeah. So. All right. No, we're not going to get distracted. <laughs> we know. No. We are glad you're there. And um, thanks, Sue. And thank you, Peg, yeah. for being here today, too. So. Um, this is open, and it's open to Psalm 91. So, hey, let's see what the Lord has to say today with Psalm 91. I know it's a really good scripture, and it's packed with a lot of good things. Um, and I like it just because you can go there to be reminded, um, especially with what we're in right now, as I keep bringing that up. But mm -hmm. this, is, this is something we've never lived through before, and it's, right. it's different, you know. Yeah. And um, there's reasons for everything. Yeah. I think in the I think in the Old Testament in Ecclesiastes it says there's a time for everything. Well, I, mm -hmm. I don't know what this is time for, but I know God is using it in a mighty way. And but it does um, it does uh, push your faith and test your faith a lot. But this is a good place to go. Yes. And it starts out by saying, "He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty." Even that, just to picture that, okay? Mm -hmm. Picture dwelling in a secret place. Of the most high and under the shadow of the almighty you know just get a visual of that yeah it's, it's comforting to me it is comforting, comforting. Mm -hmm. you know yeah <laughs> and it goes on to say i will say of the lord he's my refuge and my fortress my god in him i will trust and i have that i have him underlined really like thick um and then i have over the side that's who I will put my trust in yeah. and put my faith in because faith is really, um, the trust is really, how do you say it? Yeah, you have your faith, but it, your faith is nothing if you just have it and you yeah. don't do anything with it. Right, where are you putting your faith? Yeah, mm -hmm. you, have to, you have to put action with your faith and that becomes trust. Right. There it came out. There Thank you, you Lord. <laughs> faith without works is dead. Yeah, really I knew that would happen. come. Thank you, uh, Sue. I almost called you Reverend Sue, even though you are a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. <laughs> Um, yeah, we try to those titles right now, yes. right? That's yeah, because that's yeah, that's not we're that. regular people, just yeah, like everybody just like else. Everybody else. <laughs> same boat, we all ride in the same boat. All right, so surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the pest per, perilous. Oh, those two p words again, perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you shall take refuge. Ooh, that's good too. Mm -hmm. Again, I see those big wings, you know. Mm -hmm. He shall, his truth shall be your shield and your buckler. Do you know what a buckler is? Isn't it a small uh, sword-like knife I think that mine, they kept on their leg? Like a little dagger? Yeah. I think mine, and I don't know, mine just says small shield. So why would it be a shield and a small shield? <laughs> There's a big one they put up in front of them. To, to hold. Yeah, but then, but then they, they have this, something else. In combat, maybe. They have a smaller one, maybe. Okay. Um, Okay, I just wondered if you knew, because <laughs> I had to look it up. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
So, okay, so you shall not be afraid. Okay, this is the important part. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. Hmm. We shall not be afraid. And there's a lot of stuff right now that the, that's going on that is generating that fear, you mm-hmm. know. I mean, it's people are afraid not to do what they're told. It's the pestilence. That is the yeah. pestilence, so yeah. Right there he's saying, don't fear it. Don't fear it. So we fight that spirit of fear. Don't give in to that spirit of fear. Mm-hmm. Because if you're putting yourself under the shadow of the Almighty, then mm-hmm. he's got you covered. He's got you covered. That's right. Yeah. Amen. And I think even um, just a thought came to me when you said that. Um, I, I see a lot of times where people will respond on something, you know, to a or comment. I guess it's a comment they're making. Mm-hmm. And they'll say, just wear, a, just wear a mask, you know, just wear it. And I think that even comes from fear, you know, because yeah. they're afraid of what's going to happen if people just don't do what everybody's told to do, you know. Right. And it's just like I can see fear in a lot of things. But mm-hmm. he's telling us right there, plain and simple, not to fear it. You know, not to be afraid. Um, hey, who knew we were going to live this stuff out? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Really? It's very relevant. Did you ever think you today? were going to have to live through this? No. No. I really didn't um, think it would, I would ever experience anything like this. Um, the world's just totally different mm-hmm. than it used to be when we grew up, you mm-hmm. know. Never dreamt that we would see what we're seeing now. Mm-hmm. And then it goes on. A thousand may fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Mm-hmm. I like that. Mm, me too. Because even if people are getting sick all around me, mm-hmm. it's not going it. to come near me. And that's how we <laughs> put it to what we're in right now. Right. Mm-hmm. You right. know, that's how we can relate it to, hey, if that's what he's saying, then I can, I can uh, relate that to right now what we're in. And even if they're all, you know, falling, and a lot of times fear will cause a lot of that to come on you because mm-hmm. it, it breaks down. Um, and like stress will break down your things yeah. in your body and then things can come on it. Um, and if you don't know how to stand up against plus, plus it. Plus it's opposite what faith is. Right, fear. Yeah, it's fear opposite. is opposite. It's opposite of what your faith is. Hmm. Now here, as it goes on, I'm up to verse, I'm up to verse 8 in 91, um, in case you were following along in Psalms. Um, it says, only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. And then I have up on the top here, I have written in myself, ben- benefits are conditional. Because you have made the Lord who is my refuge, even the most high your dwelling place. Mm-hmm. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. Mm-hmm. So have you made the Lord? Your dwelling place. Yeah. And I think the the word abide means so much more than just being underneath. It's mm-hmm. a diligent um, putting yourself in and under um, God's protection and his word. It and takes work. Yeah, <laughs> it takes work. And just knowing that as you go through your day, if you're constantly talking to him, mm-hmm. you know that he's with you. So to me, that's where you're abiding with him. Right. In, in your daily life and just mm-hmm. always talk to him it's mm-hmm. what he wants it's just talking to him talking mm-hmm. to your father and it's especially exciting when he responds yes when scriptures the holy spirit brings back yeah. up yeah. to our remembrance especially when we're going through some difficult mm-hmm. things that he's able to help us remember those scriptures and fight the good right. fight of faith and, right and trust god mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah and it even talks about some divine healing here or divine health, protected mm-hmm. divine health under this, you know, and that's why we can claim this scripture that's for right. that, you know, which you often talk a lot about, you know, yeah. that the devil's trespassing and mm-hmm. we can live in divine health. And I think um, a really good example of that life um, is, is our um, brother Kenneth Copeland. You know, he walks, he walks in that, you mm-hmm. know, and... Um, that just blesses me, you know, to, to listen to him. And he definitely, I mean, look at him. <laughs> yeah. He, he looks real good for, and I'm sure how, I'm, sure I'm, I'm not going to guess on his age, but. Right. Yeah. But this hmm. does go into talking about uh, divinely protected health. It's a promise of that mm-hmm. uh, for divine healing um, from any sicknesses as a blessing of our redeemed life. 
And then it goes on to say that the word plague is used of something inflicted on a body and specifically was used to refer to the spots of leprosy. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. So it goes on. I didn't finish reading it all. We're up to, did I read 10? No evil shall befall you. I come near you. Yes, I'm up to 11. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. Hmm. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent. You shall trample underfoot. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high, because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him, and I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. I love those verses. I mean, there is so much promise and so much comfort in those. If you are putting your love, all your love on him, what a promise those are. That's what it just said. Yeah. yeah. That's you set your love awesome. upon me. Yep. Hmm. Wow. And there's probably many times where we don't even recognize that God has preserved us yeah. or saved us from different tragedies of all right, kinds. Right. We so. may not know that until we get to heaven. <laughs> right. I, I remember yeah. a time when I was driving and I, this guy was going really slow in front of me and I wanted to pass him. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't get around him. And if I would have passed him, I would have been the car that got hit by another car. Oh, wow. And I'm like, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> God, I, I thank you that yes. this guy's going slow. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> there, there might be a reason for yeah. people. Mm -hmm. on. We get road rage and all that yeah. stuff going on. That's but, so true. Yeah. But if we would just really think about, well, maybe there's a there's reason. There's a reason that you're being slowed up because mm -hmm. God's trying to protect you from something that you don't see, but he knows. Yeah. And also divine appointments. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I've heard of people like having all sorts of difficulties, maybe a flat tire or something yeah. like that. And, yeah. and what does our flesh want to do? It wants to grumble and mm -hmm. complain. And, and and yet I God has a, I love that. a neat experience and encounter yeah. that you can minister to somebody. I love that. Yeah. Just to think of that. Yeah. And, uh, I always tried a visual. I like to get visual. So mm -hmm. I love to think about, you know, how we just don't know us, you know, here we are. <laughs> We think we know everything, you know, and mm -hmm. we get fidgety and fussy and <laughs> complain. And he's just uh, like, oh. in a hurry. <laughs> they just knew that I was always looking out for them and yeah. their, their best interests. Yeah. And I'm protecting them in ways they don't even know. Yeah. But that's the love of the Heavenly Father. He's a good, he's good father. He's gracious and patient with yeah. us, you know. But I can think of several, t as you mentioned that, I can think of two times right off the bat that I really believe God intervened. And, mm -hmm. um, because yeah, some people say, oh, that's just a coincidence or, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. and I'm sorry, I just can't take that and believe that because I know that I know that, that God intervened. Mm -hmm. The once was on the motorcycle, as you mm -hmm. talked about that. Was that when we started the program or was that before we started the program? Before. <laughs> okay. Uh, talking about motorcycles. Yeah. 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 I never shared that. But. Okay. Well, I remember <laughs> on a motorcycle one time, we used to have <laughs> motorcycles, you know, that we rode and actually we still have it, but we don't ride it a lot anymore. Mm -hmm. um, and we were headed to uh, we were headed over to Gettysburg, I think, Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. Very fun place for us to visit. I love the history there, and don't want to get off on a squirrel trap uh, this way. But <laughs> help me. <laughs> but I remember talking to a lady there in the store before I tell you about the where God intervened, and she's like, I just don't understand. You know, I love it here, and I talked to my sister, and she's just like, doesn't understand why I love to work here and why I love it here. There's just so much death and 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 memories and yuck, and I was like. And she goes, I don't see it like that. I see it as freedom, you know? Great mm -hmm. things were accomplished here. And I mm -hmm. thought, wow, what a difference of an opinion how somebody looked yeah. at that, you know? This lady's thinking, oh, it just all reminds me of. And there was a lot of mm -hmm. bad things that happened, but look what came out of it, yeah. you know? But anyway, that was that. It was heading there. Yeah. And it, the roads were a little damp, you know? And um, so then I'm always tend to be more <laughs> cautious because it's like, oh, don't go fast anyway. I don't like to go fast. And um, I don't know that we were really going too fast, but maybe for the conditions we were, because the road was damp, it was kind of starting to spit mm -hmm. rain. And so we're kind of coming off this ramp, you know, so it kind of is like going, you know, it's kind of like a curve, and so mm -hmm. we're kind of coming off and curving. And um, so you have to kind of be leaning when you go certain, you know, directions like that. And so we're leaning, and 
there's a guardrail there because we're coming off on a ramp and we're going to merge with a highway. So we're coming off, you know, and we're kind of leaning into it. And I, I felt the bike start to go like this. And I see the guardrail coming closer and oh closer my. to us. And all I could think of was, okay, unless, <laughs> unless God does something, unless you do something, mm -hmm. yeah. we're going to hit that guardrail. And you just kind of brace yourself, you know, mm -hmm. and boom, just like that. When we're inches, I probably could have touched, touched it. it with my oh, finger. My <laughs> and there's a semi in front of us and a semi in back of us, oh you know. My. And just like that, he, he was able to regain control of it and straighten it up. And see, mm -hmm. I, I know that that is not just yeah. a coincidence. No. No. God had his hand up on us. And it wasn't, we were, surely weren't going home then. And it wasn't like that, you know. Right. So he's like, get in there and correct it now before they <laughs> get themselves into trouble. That was one time. The mm -hmm. other time was um, quite a few years ago, um, and I was headed home from church when we were in Worcester instead of in Orville, um, and I was going down this uh, one road to head down south where we live, and it's a dark, straight road, and I turned down, and there's, I started going slow, you know, to get going, mm -hmm. and there was kind of like a... Um, I don't know, it really wasn't a bridge, but kind of like a bridge. I guess there was some form of something running underneath it, so they had to put some kind of, but it wasn't a major one, you know. And so here I come, I'm just slow, you know, and it's kind of darkish, so I'm not going real fast. And not pitch black, but just starting to get dusk, mm -hmm. I guess we call it. And I want to get back on track here. Um, <laughs> we don't want to talk about deer. <laughs> and this deer pops out, you know, right at this kind of this bridgey thing, whatever it's called. And it's like, oh, I remember shutting my eyes going, oh, because he was right there so close. And, and it was just going to boom. He was going to have to hit me. And I closed my eyes for a second and I opened them up. And it was like, where he? where'd he go? <laughs> you know, and I thought, well, I immediately thought, well, maybe he just jumped over the car or something, you know. And I looked in my mirror and I'm looking all around and it's like, he's gone. I don't Couldn't see him see anywhere. <laughs> he's just gone. You know, he's just gone. What like, happened to him? He's not anywhere to be found. And it was just so, so evident that. You were going to hit him. Something stopped that deer. Yeah, and God intervened. Yeah. yeah. So he just went yeah. somewhere. I don't know where he went. Maybe he got called up. There's animals <laughs> in heaven, right? Yes. <laughs> but that was that was definitely to me. That was just like, whoa! Did I just see that? Yeah, you did. Could have got ugly. Yeah, it yeah. even though I wasn't going ugly. that fast, but he disappeared. Yeah. But anyway, I don't know how we got off on that. How we get off on that? That's okay. Cause <laughs> I, I think a lot of times when we do have. Uh, well, I was just thinking about negative things that we mm -hmm. have happened to us. If we get our mind on kingdom right. and what, what right. is the commission, mm -hmm. God with us, helping, wanting us to minister to somebody, which reminded me, and I hope I'm not getting too far off the tra of track here, but just um, the one time that we went, uh, we were get, the pastor was getting ordained or something through. Christian International, yeah. and oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I had a huge migraine oh. before well, when I got up the next morning, and I had had I had had a dream, and it all kind of started with you um, saying I feel like I need to go talk to this waitress, hmm. and so you remember and, that, yeah. And Pastor sent us back in there. Mm -hmm. Jackie was with us, mm -hmm. and. Just how that unfolded. Mm -hmm. um, you, I forget who started, but everybody just yeah. had a, a piece mm -hmm. that God gave them. Mm -hmm. And I got to looking at her, and it, she was this person that was in my dream. Wow. And I go, I, you're, <laughs> you were in my dream, and you're, you've been contemplating suicide, haven't oh, you? And, wow. and here, yeah. here she yeah. was, and um, I felt really fleshly, crappy, crappy. I, I did bet, not feel good bet. whatsoever, but you know, after we ministered and everybody mm -hmm. gave the peace to her, she got saved and yes. accepted Jesus <laughs> as her Savior and Lord and um, encouraged her to find a church because we weren't in Ohio, mm -hmm. we were in our state and my migraine was gone. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> devil tried to stop the ministry to her mm -hmm. and just think if we wouldn't have gone back in and if you wouldn't mm -hmm. have fought through what you were feeling, you know? Right. It's really... Her soul could have counted, yeah. you know, yeah. totally on that. It's really interesting how God will use... Yeah. And even if stuff, like if the deer would have hit your car, you know, mm -hmm. what's the <laughs> word say? That God will turn everything that the enemy means for our bad. If something bad happens, let's start looking for the good that's going to yeah. come, come out of that. Yes. Yeah. 
And you have to mention those because if yeah. you don't mention things like that, so I'm really grateful that yeah. you brought that up. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for giving that word to her because if you don't talk about that, Mm -hmm. And then somebody gets into a situation, they'll be like, yeah, you know, they say God, you know, does this and does that. But yeah, yeah. look what happened to me. Right. You know, they're focused Stuff on. Stuff happens because we live in this world. Right. Yeah. And they get but, stuck in the negative. Yeah. It's turning it around and right. saying, okay, well, yeah, but let's see what God can do with that. You and know. start praising him for yeah. the good that's going to come. Don't see it yet, Lord, Don't but there's it. something coming. And that's yeah. where you have to start speaking what the word says and not what the thoughts that are coming into you had those negative things. Right. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't know, do you want me to tell our story or do you want to get back on? Tell it. Okay. <laughs> tell it. Um, so my two daughters, Jennifer and Christine, were in a car accident. Mm -hmm. There was six out of seven kids killed in that car accident in, uh, on December 27th of 2000. Um, my two daughters were ones that, mm -hmm. that didn't survive. Mm -hmm. um, but through all that, <sighs> The, the blessings and the people that poured out their love and their prayers mm -hmm. for us received like over 100 cards one day. It was just amazing. Mm -hmm. And then other people, even teachers at school, were saying they were, they were turning to God is what was really cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And one of the teachers says, I'm going to talk about God. And, 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 and if they correct me for doing that, then oh, they well. correct me. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I just believe that a lot of people through that tragedy um, found Jesus as their Savior yes. and Lord because mm -hmm. right. that's what he does. He turns yeah. the, the nasty, ugly tragedies and traumas. He, mm -hmm. We just have to look for the, the gems right. and stuff that are in right. those, those traumas and right. tragedies because he will use it for yes. good. Yeah. Isn't and there that's also a testimony of the ones, the surviving girl? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that is beautiful. Yeah. Let yeah. me share that? Yeah. Yeah. So the one girl that did survive, she saw angels come and take all the kids away. Mm -hmm. um, she was wondering like, why didn't they take yeah. me? But yeah. Um, yeah. she saw that and she wow. was actually in a, um, she had a concussion. So she really didn't even realize she was speaking mm -hmm. these things, but I believe that God gave that to her and her sister, she told her sister this when she still was in this concussion, mm -hmm. this state mm -hmm. of not really knowing what had happened. Mm -hmm. um, and so that, just like was such a uh, great relief and hope. Right. Um, I mean, I knew my girls had accepted Jesus as right. their Savior and Lord, mm -hmm. and um, well, their Savior, Lord, Lord, making Him Lord of our lives is a lot different than yeah. just accepting Him as their Savior. Yeah. Because we have to, when we make Him Lord of our lives, we're saying, okay, we're exchanging our lives for your right. your life, and we we're gonna walk the way. There's more knowing to knowing having a head knowledge. Yes. Yeah, it's a deeper thing because your life is he's living his life through you and you're laying your life down mm -hmm. so that he may do that. Yeah. And so it was just really a great relief for right. I know it was for myself and I'm sure the other um, parents of the kids yeah. that didn't survive. Hopefully mm -hmm. that was an encourage yeah. encouragement and a comfort. Yeah. To and I do believe that at that time if you could just see if your eyes were open to the spiritual realm around us mm -hmm. there's so much more going on yeah. than we ever could imagine you know mm -hmm. yeah and i believe that i totally believe that's what that, she saw even yeah. though she may not have that the, that would be the realm that you would see that in the know? spiritual realm exactly yeah. and some people do see the spiritual realm and it's very yes, real it is it's very yeah. real so oh, that's good I know that there's a family that I know of that's going through some major things right now, too, and um, they don't know the Lord, and um, it is a distant relation um, for me, and um, I think he had a motorcycle accident without a helmet, and oh, wow. not in real good shape, but mm -hmm. they have reached out because they know that they know people that pray, Yeah. Mm -hmm. and so they have reached across state lines and asking mm -hmm. for prayer, and uh, little by little, I mean, I just got an update, I think it was this morning or yesterday, and that he's, he's able to respond now. He's awake. Wow. Uh, still got a lot of broken bones that need repaired, but there was some brain bleed or something going on up in, up in the head. Um, but he's communicating and he's opening mm -hmm. his eyes. Mm -hmm. And it's like, and I know that yeah. God is drawing all them, that yes. this is going to be like uh, a, you know, what the opening. devil meant for bad to take mm -hmm. this guy out, you know. and. <laughs> um, God's going to bring He's all them to him. making real. He is. And they're going to be like, wow, yeah. only God could do only this. God. You know, from what he looked like and what, yes. he, what he had uh, from the accident to, yeah. 
to this, it's like, and I just, that's what my sister and I were believing, that God is working mm -hmm. in their lives and he's going to bring all of them into salvation. Yeah. You know? So that's like, wow. Our whole household just will be saved. It. That's right. <laughs> just do it, Lord. Yeah. Just do it. That's exciting. It is. And I had uh, flipped over here um, into Philippians for some reason, and <laughs> I love this. I just happened to look down and see um, the subtitle there that I, that I turned to in Philippians. It says, Pressing Toward the Goal. That's what it's all about. That's we just keep pressing about. on, yes. mm -hmm. even though we may uh, be experiencing some of these crazy things right now. Mm -hmm. And um, for whatever reason, you know, that they're hyped up and, and the agendas and all that stuff. But we don't even have to be concerned about that because God is bigger. God yeah. God's is above control. it all. You He's know? above it all. And we just keep pressing on, you know, yes. pressing on toward the goal. I like that. I like I mm -hmm. like to read what Paul has written. Yeah, he's and I like that. I like, you know, he's experienced so many things, and we aren't going to have time because we're running out of time, but um, there's just so much that he experienced, and, and yet he still kept on, and he still kept on, and he still kept on, and, and, he, and he kept encouraging other believers, you know, and, and prayer was a big thing for Paul, you know, mm -hmm. because he stated many times to, to pray without ceasing, ceasing and to yeah. pray at all times. I mean, prayer was a big thing, and that mm -hmm. can be a whole program in itself. Yeah, mm -hmm. his power his, of prayer. Yes. Yeah. Another P word. Yeah, we were talking about those P words, weren't we? Yeah. Those P's are good, uh, right? I do like P words <laughs> yeah. in the Bible. I like the pitiful and the powerful one, you know. Where we don't have to be pitiful. Yeah. We're supposed to be powerful. Yeah, yeah. I like yeah. that one. Yeah, and there's That's many good. other ones. I think we did a program on, on we the did. letter P one time. <laughs> we did. Yeah, and it was all good. It was yes, all it good. Was. Yeah. It was fun. So... Yeah, so it goes on just to say rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice, you know, and that's just part of what Paul was writing about to the Philippians. Um, but that's a whole program in itself, you know, to talk about to talk about Paul and to talk about the power of prayer. So we're not going to have time to get into that. But um, I'm, gra I'm grateful for Psalm 91 today and that we can yes, read yes. it and share um, with those uh, listening to the program today. So... Um, I did want to uh, just throw out there and thank you for watching again. And um, if you care to support the ministry here, um, uh, we're recording the program Join the Journey at the studio um, at Faith Harvest Fellowship Church. And we have a ministry here called Fresh Vision Ministry that we make this available to anybody who would love to come and, and record their programs. And um, mm -hmm. it's just by a donation. So we and just so want to thank you for being part of the program today and joining in with Joy in the Journey with Sue and Peg and I. We're grateful for you, um, and we're grateful that God gives us the opportunity just to share with you. Thanks for joining in today, and we will see you again next week. Bye-bye.